Well, Josh, the brothers Nurmagomedov are at it and they're starting to talk and they have plans and who knows if it's going to be right, but Umar Nurmagomedov has a phenomenal fight coming up against Corey Sanhagen, but his brother has got an equally impressive fight against Alexander Shabley coming up in San Diego, but the question is, Umar is saying that as soon as Islam Makachev decides to vacate that lightweight belt because no one's going to beat him is what he's saying that Usman Nurmagomedov is going to be coming over to the UFC to take his spot and take that belt. Do you think that's all in the game plan with the Nurmagomedovs? I feel like his uncle's plan. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I think it was all uncle's plan. You know, I mean, let's, let's not beat around the bush. These guys they are going to be champions in the UFC. And now I can't say what weight classes, but they're going to produce some of the best athletes for, I think, another decade at least. They're going to continue to build on this. You know, as, as you get more further removed from Habib and Islam and, you know, and Usman and Umar and Abu Bakr and those guys, you're going to see that they'll probably start, start having a couple little uh, kinks in the armor along the way, but I think that they're always going to be able to pr produce some of the best athletes and the best fighters in the world out of that facility, out of his gym. I think just the mindset of how they're going to do it is very important. I do believe that let's, let's just actually, let's not even talk about believing. Let's talk about exactly what Umar said. So here, I'm going to play this for let's, you and we'll go from there. There you go. Play it. Usman's Usman. Usman gonna come? Yes. Ciao. To the UFC? Yes, why not? This is a bombshell. Will he leave Bellator PFL? <laughs> I don't know what's gonna be future, but it's goal. That's his goal. Yes. After Islam, we have plan for Usman. See? After Islam, we have plan for Usman to come. And in <clears throat> everything is planned, it's all taken care of. We know exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it. Just no one else does. Well, I mean, John, they pick the <laughs> toughest weight class to keep trying to come back and defend the title. I mean, you oh, got you got to think. Definitely one of them. Yeah, I, John, let's be real. It's the toughest. Let's be honest. It's always don't, been, don't the, start toughest. Just it's always there, been the toughest. Let's be honest. There's a, there's, there are two weight classes below it right now. If I was now, a 70-pounder, John, are, I, I would have I would have beat GSP. If you were 70 <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I'm having a heart attack. The 55 right now. pounders were the best. You, we were the what best. What are you talking? Jesus Christ. Did we you were, actually just we were say the best. that? We were the best. My God. <laughs> oh, GSB was amazing, man. He was amazing. Oh, my God. Absolute stud, man. Absolute stud. Well, look at 155 weight pound class has absolutely been one of the strongholds as far as the best fighters on the planet competing mm -hmm. in that weight class. No <laughs> doubt about it. Right now, I would say that. 135 definitely is yeah. incredibly strong. 145 is still strong. Well, 135, 135 is where his brother's at. So, like, they're not that's picking where the Umar, easy. That's where Umar's Umar is at. at. Oh, yeah, I know. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. But, you know, and you take a look, you know, the fight that Umar is going to have against Corey Sanhagen. That's an absolute phenomenal matchup. That's one that you get to watch for free. Man, if you're not going to be tuned into that, you're crazy because that is, that's dynamite. That's, but the fact that, you know, this gym, you know, if, if people understood where it's at and, and the things that, you know, the, the lifestyle there, the lifestyle there makes it to where the training and the lifestyle and the way they go about doing things tends to put people in a position where they don't have bad habits they don't do things that are going to negatively affect their career. Everything is laid out for them. We've got this plan for you, and this is how we're going to get there. And I'm going to put you in this organization first, and then we're going to move you to this organization while, while this brother is over here and your brother is over here, and we're going to do this. That's, that's called planning, and they, they do plan things out, and it's smart. It's the way you should do things because you want to get people – exposure you want you want them exposure to better competition you want them exposure to pressure and the big lights at times and that's not always the the best thing for them is to be in the ufc right away i look at it all and go hey 
if there's one thing that the 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 men from Dagestan have proven is whatever they're doing works. And if you have things planned out just like they did with they had it with Islam, you know, when when Habib is done, Islam's going to be the guy. He's going to come in and take that title and he did that. He came in shortly after, you know, it was in a, in a, someone else's hands, took the title and he hasn't looked back. And so if they're saying that, you know, somewhere along the way, Usman is going to work his way over to the UFC, I don't doubt it. You know, if that's the plan for him, that's exactly what he'll do. And he's going to respect the plan that's been made for him. And he'll be in the UFC with his brother. And I do believe that if his brother, you know, his brother, if he gets past Corey, has already been told, you get a title shot. Mm -hmm. So he's one fight away from being able to fight for that title. You know what they're doing over there? Yeah, hard work. <laughs> but what they're doing is no distractions. Yes. They, once Everything. they, they're just, they are, like you said, following the plan. The plan is to have no distractions. Whatever it is that you think I should be doing or doing outside of this, th that's a distraction to me. <clears throat> I get up and I run. I get up and I work out. I get, I eat, shower, sleep, do the same thing the next day. Like it's, it's on a schedule. Like yeah. I said, I've ran into them. At 10 and 11 o'clock at night at the hotels for the Bellator events. As I'm headed to the bar, they're headed to the gym. There's no distractions. They they do things in groups too. It's a lot easier to go run at 11 o'clock at night when you got two of your friends with you who are saying, you know what? I got to run too. No distractions. You want to be good at something? That's what you've got to do. Surround yourself with people that have the common goals. Now, we can all say that we surround ourselves with people with common goals, but not all of us are in the same family. Not all of us are sure we're teammates. We're not all living in the same house. We're not all living down the street from each other. We're not all traveling together as a family and pushing and holding each other accountable. I need to go run. Well, <clears throat> I'll go with you because I got to run too because I got something coming up <clears throat> or I want to have something coming up. So I need to be in shape. They hold themselves accountable for every minute, every minute of their day. That's I didn't waste time. What were you doing today? Oh, you're on your phone. What are you no, I was actually out running. I was doing hill sprints. I got my lift in today. I rode the bike for 40 minutes. They're holding themselves accountable and that's what makes them so good. And I love the fact that they help each other grow. Like, hey, <clears throat> I got to work with you on this wrestling aspect of it all. After we get in Ryan Vice, we're going to pummel a little bit. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on that. They, they work on one or two things a day and then they move on. They, gr they drill it so much that it just becomes ingrained to in them. It becomes second nature to them. They're not doing anything special. They're just not letting themselves get distracted. All a lot of other fighters allow themselves to get distracted. Like we have this concept of, <clears throat> sorry, we have this concept of like, oh, but I want to enjoy life too. <laughs> like we you feel can. like we're, we, we are like, we deserve it, we, which we do, but you can enjoy life when you're done achieving all the goals that you set out for yourself. That's what the difference is. There's no distractions until they hit their goal. And then when they hit their goal, what other goal can I get to that's just right there? That's very tangible if I just keep doing what I'm doing. Well, for Islam, it's to become the 170 pound champ. For Usman, it's to come in and become the UFC champ. For Umar, it's to become the 135 pound champ. And I also believe for Umar, he'll probably want to go to 45 and try to be champ there too. I, ex I have high expectations for this group that I know. I have a high expectation for them. The younger ones, I'm, I'm not familiar with a whole lot. The ones that are coming up, I don't know them. <clears throat> but I do know the ones that I kind of came up with or they came up with me as I was on my way out. I was going to say, you didn't come up with them. They came up with they you. They came up with me. But they, but <laughs> as, I was on, as I was on my way out, yeah. they had goals. They aspired to do something. And um, I can see this. But let's go ahead and talk real quick, though, about Usman. And I'm going to talk about his opponent he's fighting, too. Alexander Shabli. I've trained with him, sparred well, with him, want. worked with him. Fantastic fighter. Those two guys. I can say it sucks that one of them is going to have to lose because yeah. when I look at both of them, both of them could go into the UFC right now and become automatic title contenders with one fight. If I put True. them stylistically matched them up, <clears throat> if I put Usman or Shabli against Sarukian, Oliveira, Gaethje, Poirier, or Gamrot, and for sure Chandler, those five, six, I, I give them any given day, they can beat them any given day. Am I wrong or am I just blowing smoke? 
No, not I, when you're saying on on any given day, on most days. Okay. Look at Alexander Shabley is a sniper. This guy in the stand up with his hands is as good as anybody in the UFC right now. Let's just be honest about it. He's that good with his stand up. Now his stand up is different than Usman's. They're both stand up fighters to a point, but they attack it in a different fashion. I'm going to say that you know, uh, you know, Shabli's hands are better than Usman's. Oh yeah, Usman's kicks are better than Shabli's. Um, you get you get into the wrestling, they're pretty goddamn close. You know, it's it's there. You know, for both of them, so it, it's just a matter of. I mean, they're so closely connected as far as the way they a- attack people in fights is different, but it's from the same setups and the same style. Shabli being a little bit more of a counter fighter than Usman. Usman is more of an attacker. He's the guy that will go after you and then he'll counter your counter where Shabli likes to be the cat. He likes to sit there and make you miss and then make you pay. Mm-hmm. But he'll also be the guy on the attack. And he did that when he fought, you know, uh, Mosayev, you know, Tofik Mosayev. He absolutely was the guy on the attack and just, you know, basically steamrolled a really good stand up fighter. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> both those guys could go into the UFC right now and they're going to take a top 10 spot from somebody and uh, and they're going to be there a while. You know, obviously, Usman is incredibly young. I think he's 26 now, maybe 25, 26, where and, and Shabli is I think right 29. Now. And he's 29, maybe I was, was going to say now. I was going to say 30. OK, so he's young, too. He's got all he's got a ton of years left. Both of them are going to be there for a long time. My farm needs the earth, the air and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. The other thing that they don't have is they don't have a lot of miles on them. And the reason being is because they've been fighting in Bellator. So they've fought, they've got, they fought good opponents, but they haven't fought every haven't single damaged. time. They haven't had to fight and the they, best fighter. And look at they, let's be honest. Who's damaged them in their fights? No one. Nobody. No one. Nobody. You know, Shabley with his fight with Primus, he did take some shots, but he actually had a great performance. The, I mean, Knocked some leg Primus kicks out. and things like that. Um, his fight with um, Tofik Mosayev, that fight was it was a great fight, but it was the two of them understood we both could lose with a knockout by by taking shots. They were both very fast. They knew what was at yeah. stake. <clears throat> They're very similar in style. Shabby was just the better wrestler and the but better, more counter. You striker. saw, but you saw quickly after about the two and a half minute mark of the first round, mm-hmm. Shabley figured out the range on Mosayev and started just putting shots on him that Mosayev could not figure out yeah. how to stop. No. And that's what, and that's why I say Shabli, you know, I, I call him a sniper. He is, he's that guy that sits there, he waits, but when he throws, he's incredibly accurate with what he throws. He makes it land in the target that he wants it to land. And it's just dependent on how hard he throws it. You know, he could beat anyone. He's that good. I, I eventually would like to see, and I know I don't normally say this, but honestly, I'd like to see those two guys fight the top guys in the world. <clears throat> and I'd love to oh, yeah. see those guys, you know, against a, you know, obviously not Usman against Islam, but I'd like to see a Shabli against a, <laughs> against a Islam. I'd like to see a Shabli. Shabli to me against someone like a Charles Oliveira would be a fun fight or, or a Justin Gaethje or, or Dustin would, Poirier. Him, him against Justin Gaethje or a Max Holloway mm-hmm. would be a, phen- a phenomenal oh. fight. Max Holloway and Shabli. Yeah. I'm going to say are two of the most technically uh, astute fighters there are in the standup. And to put those guys together in a fight. Oh my God. Yeah. He wouldn't, I don't think he'd fight uh Poirier because they train together. They've been sparring yeah. partners together, but uh, yep. you know, there's fights to be made there. Usman against, you know, someone like a Charles Oliveira, someone against like, uh, you know, I would Usman like to- against Oliveira would be a phenomenal. That'd fight. be a great fight. Fantastic phenomenal. fight. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. There's fights to be had there, man. There's fights that'll be had there. But overall, I'm looking forward to seeing how their fight plans out. But we'll see if he eventually makes his way in the plan. This is the plan. <laughs> it's Quotations. The, it's 
destiny. It's destiny. It's, but it's 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 Uncle's plan. He's going to end up in the UFC. Will he end up the champion though? That's the question. 